presentation. We are going to look at the emergence of a westernized African elite. Emergence of a westernized African elite in the history of Africa. The impacts, the transformations, the conflicts, the agreements, and um, the progressive situations that African history or African generally witnessed. Before the colonial period, the societal African elites that exist were mainly traditional rulers, businessmen, mainly some of them that were into long-term business, chief priests or priests, prince and uh, princesses depending on the cultural orientation. Uh, traditional rulers, uh, military commanders, and these elites enjoyed strong societal respect. Well, it all depends on the cultural orientation because Africa is not completely a whole same people. There are some cultural differences or cultural differentiations that can uh, be that may have been seen in many areas. Now, with the emergence or with the institution of colonial rule by the Europeans, yeah, was the establishment or the creation of a new type of elites. These elites were mainly some few Africans that were opportune to have acquired European style or Western style education. In some European or colonial structures, mainly in the French and the Portuguese colonial structures, these Africans were given some level of recognition. Some of them were allowed to be part of the civil service. Some of them were allowed to be part of lower government structures. Although it was different when you look analyze when you analyze the colonial political structure of the British. It was different. Now in the French colonial structure, these opportune African elites were looked upon as assimilated people. Assimilated people. And they were seen and they were seen as black French. Black French. This status made some of them to feel that they were higher above other others in, in African society. Well, the Europeans, mainly the French, looked at them as leaders. This brought a conflict situation. Well, before we go into that, let us, there was, after the traditional African elites, in some of the African areas where Islam was introduced, there existed, or there was a creation of another elite, the Ulamas and the uh, Islamic leaders. These elites, based on re religious orientation, commanded some respect. And these elites, we are also seen as the leaders of the people, mainly those of them that subscribe to the Islamic faith. Well, with the emergence of these new European or westernized African elites, there was a conflict in some quarters in Africa, whereby the African elites, Europeanized elites, African Europeanized elites, saw themselves as being higher than the ulamas, or saw themselves struggling for space, or struggling for recognition with the ulamas and the religious leaders, the Qadis, and some other Islamic religious leaders. In a place like Algeria, these westernized African elites founded a group called Young Algeria. It was a political movement force, or political force called Young Algeria. And they tend to lean towards, or they tend to move towards French 
interests. Because of the, the recognition and the status the French government or the French colonial government gave to them. This brought serious conflict between them and the religious leaders. But this cannot be said for the British colonial areas. The British were, we are very um, economical in investing in education. They did not invest much in education. Rather, they gave the missionaries the opportunity to provide education. But the bottom line was the, the basic um, structure or basic condition for the missionaries' provision of education was mainly to provide communication in order to make it easy for their missionary activities. The missionaries needed uh, translators, they needed middlemen interpreters, they needed catechists, they needed pastors, and they needed people that can help them to, trans to translate the uh, Bible from English to local languages. That happened to be the major area. They also needed teachers, basically. So they, that happened to be the major area of their educational act uh, practice or transmission. But the French, in many of their territories, tried to create educational uh, activities or structure to almost the level of the French uh, system. Well, with this emergence, the reality of social stratification or social division came into African society. The, the, these elites worked very hard to present European interests to Africans. In the British colonial structures, the opportune elites were given the instruction of preaching or presenting or transmitting the un unacceptable fact that the European culture, European way of life, we are better than the African way of life. And this was the basic instruction given to them by the uh, colonial masters to transmit to their people. Now, in this situation, the Africans in many places saw their own brothers presenting living life of Europeans, presenting, presenting the culture of the Europeans as being better than the African culture. Some of them that were opposing to be doctors were used as faces to discredit African uh, medicine. They looked at African medicine as unorthodox and inhuman. Some lawyers as well, among them, we are presented as means of discrediting African cultural traditional laws. And this became a platform for the bastardization, I'm sorry if I, if, if I use a heavy word, and the, 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 the concept of discrediting African culture when you put it in a pendulum with the European culture. That to the present day, in Africa, in most places in Africa, European languages supersede. Uh, most countries in Africa have European languages as their lingua franca. Apart from some areas like uh, the, 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 the Swahili, although I, I can't tell you fully about the analysis, where some level of African integration with some European integration, we are made to be the order of the day. Well, if you go to places like um, Nigeria, Ghana, some of these um, British colonized Western, West African countries, you see the pidgin language, which is the um, attempted infusion of African traditional language, African language with European or with, with English or the, with the British um, English. Well, in some cultures today, in some areas in Africa, students are even told to discredit the local, any attempt by the, 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 the locals or by Africans to 
make their culture to be relevant. A lot of African cultures we are made presented as inhuman, crude, unacceptable, and uh, purely local. Well, I am not actually saying that every other culture in Africa we are all lovely. No, there are some dirty ones. Let me use the word dirty ones. I know I didn't use a heavy word, but there were some that were purely unacceptable that could have been restructured or rearranged. Well, it, it was not actually everything about the elites not doing the right thing. Towards the end of the, the, the World War, the Second World War, most of these elites, some of them, they were, they were opportunity to have served on, in the army on the part of the um, their colonial masters saw the European culture differently. And upon returning to Africa, they started pushing for decolonization. They started realizing the mistakes most of them made by supporting European cultural values over African cultural values. Well, at, at that period, most of them became rallying points, or most of the organizations became rallying points for nationalistic activities in some of these different countries, making it uh, a very huge force and very huge unavoidable force for the Europeans. Most of them became strong headache for the Europeans because already they have, they have the Europeanized educational structures and they could stand in for themselves to express themselves within the European cultural practice or cultural platform. Well, the conflicts, the disagreements, the, 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 the dehumanizations, and the devaluation of African culture to today is, the, is a, major empire, a major problem in Africa. The neo-colonialism or the neo-colonialistic structure that still exists in many parts of Africa today is a thing of concern. It got even to a point that some of these elites did not even allow their children to speak African languages. Rather, they encouraged them to speak only European languages. Unfortunately, I will say that we still have Europeanized elites today in Africa. I'm opportune to, to, have, to have been a teacher where I'm even exp explaining this concept using English. But I was, I'm opportune to be a teacher. And and I handle younger ones. In our platform for teaching, we find out that we don't even encourage the children to express themselves in their local language. language. It's only, we only do that once in a week. But the other part, days in the week, we are expected to speak European language. And then it got to a point, to the point now from analysis, most young ones today don't really care about African languages. If you are in a culture in Africa here or anywhere, we are the young ones today are strongly holding on to the African language within that region, you should count yourself lucky. Well, this debate and this analysis is not for only me to express or to present. Your comments will be highly accept, appreciated and um, uh, let us make this debate you know, worthwhile. If you are watching me for the first time, please subscribe to my channel, subscribe to our channel, and click on the notification icon so that anytime we drop a new content, you will be one of the earliest persons to be notified. Please, we beg you to share our content. No matter how poorly presented they are, please share our content so that it will, will be able to reach a lot of persons that will definitely or surely desire this information. Thank you for being part of our channel. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.